Phil, that was uh, Matthew Fox, a former Dominican priest, now an Anglican uh, priest, uh, and I believe he, he called it uh, uh, theological asylum he received from the Anglican Church. But uh, quite, a, for me, an, an impressive guy, obviously a very deep thinker, is well-written and uh, not afraid to speak up about what he believes in, regardless of the consequences. Yeah, I was really thrilled that we could get him on. I've been uh, an admirer of his for years, and uh, some people I know know him personally and uh, think the world of him. I just think people like him are extremely brave to do what they do, and you know they um, they're ahead of the curve. And you know he's been doing certain things since the seventies that, you know, the world is catching up to now. Right. And, and I think, uh, unfortunately, I don't think the Catholic church is catching up. Uh, so, uh certainly if there's been some improvement with the, with the new Pope, but, but, uh, it, it's still really to me, uh, much of their thinking is in the dark ages. And he was, uh, expelled from the Dominican order. He wasn't excommunicated from the church, which was, is considered most severe, but he was expelled from the Dominican order because of beliefs he had, things he taught, and a lot of it had to do with feminism, a lot of it had to do with uh, his attitudes uh, toward the environment, and uh, he even received some criticism for his, uh, I, I don't know, his association or his, uh, with, with Native Americans or, or uh, yeah. you know, expounding some of their beliefs. So, but I, I yeah, think he has, yeah. How open he is to all the other traditions and how respectful. Uh, and, and, you know, there were certain doctrinal things you know, I don't think we mentioned it, but one of the premises of his uh, creation, well, he did, yes. He mentioned that one of the premises of his uh, creation spirituality is a rejection of the notion of original sin, which, you know, the church, as he put it, you know, it, it's a a post-Jesus invention um, mm -hmm. um, by a few centuries. Um, but it's been central to church dogma for for a long, long time, and uh, this is a rejection of it. He calls it original blessing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and is much more in line with uh, the other uh, world traditions that hold us, you know, to have a a, a, a divine nature. Right. Um, As a matter of fact, this whole concept of original sin, according to his research, uh, was something that came up, you know, four, uh, 400 years, uh, 400 years ago. It's, it's, it's something, or, or 400, maybe it was AD, but certainly not, not from, uh, Christ or any of the original teachings. And there's a, a lot of stuff like that in the church and, and, but, uh, yeah. it's a apostolic tradition. And I think they, they make the rules and laws up as they go along. And there are, you know, his, his, his work and his thinking in, in regard to the environment. Uh, there are conservative Catholics and, you know, fundamentalist Christians. Not all, but there are those I've heard speak, and they feel the earth is here to serve us, and really mm -hmm. no responsibility toward the earth itself. And that was a big discussion in, in, in Catholicism, was is it sinful or is it a sin to, uh, to, to pollute? To damage the earth, uh, especially if one is doing it purposefully. So, so these are the kinds of things that that that, that I think uh, there are theologians like uh, uh, Matthew Fox who are uh, you know progressive thinkers, but unfortunately, I think the majority are still stuck in another age and and not thinking progressively uh, about these issues. And uh, so now he's in the Anglican Church. When the Anglican Church uh, came into being, when uh, I think uh, was it Henry VIII, or uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, would, would not uh, obey the Pope, or he, he, they were going to uh, excommunicate him. So he, oh, he wanted a church. divorce. Yeah, he wanted a divorce. <laughs> so what they what they did was, uh, uh, so the the, the teaching uh, of the of the mm -hmm. Anglican Church and its ritual is very 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 similar to Catholicism. There's not much difference, but obviously there's some uh, uh, greater uh, uh, flexibility in terms of. Uh, scripture and, and discussing new ideas. You know, some of, the, some of the thinking of the church, I mean, the Catholic Church officially is against any form of birth control that's not natural. So, uh, and, and if you poll Catholics anywhere, I, I, I believe 90, 95% practice some form of birth control. So uh, they're really not in touch 
with their people. Their, their laws are not uh, being obeyed. And I think uh, somebody and others like Mar Matthew Fox uh, are great for shaking the rafters and making people really think and question these teachings. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, what goes on behind the scenes, but um, I'm guessing, you know, the Vatican, is, when I, you see pictures of the Vatican, it's all old men. Right. Um, you know, as the next generation comes about, maybe the younger priests, the younger cardinals will have different views. Right. You know, we may not live to see those kind of changes, but unless they change, it'll just be, um, uh, you know, it, it will be to Catholics what uh, Orthodox Judaism or, you know, Hasidism is to to um, to Jews. It will be, you know, a small sect because the world, you know, is, is, is different and it's hard to adapt uh, when you have that level of orthodoxy uh, carried on uh, from the past. So, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens. No, and, and uh, you mentioned that you see a lot of old men and, and no women. Uh, there's no, yeah. I mean, nuns are still subservient to priests. It is amazing that the organization still gives gets away with that. Why are they still a nonprofit uh, mm -hmm. organization in the United States? If you had a church uh, like uh, the Church of Latter day Saints was until they changed the ruling where uh, uh, blacks were not. Uh, considered equal with whites, were not allowed into the higher echelons of the of the priesthood or whatever, then uh, I, I would think that uh, that that organization should lose its nonprofit status. I don't know how to get away with it. Uh, you know. Well, I I don't know. I don't really feel like fighting that battle. No. But um, you know, Martin Luther King once said that eleven o'clock on Sunday morning is the most segregated time in America. Right. So people tend to go to the houses of worship and find spiritual organizations that um, they're comfortable in and that have right. people like themselves. Um, but that's changing too, you know, as people move around a lot, you see so much more inter-spiritual work and right. inter-faith work and, you know, people uh, learning from one another, uh, coming from different uh, traditions and so forth. I think, you know, a lot of that is just will break down just because of the normal course of human evolution. Mm -hmm. but when did you first get become... Back to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Getting get back. back to Matthew Fox, uh, you know, he, he's been a progressive thinker. He's in his mid-70s or late-70s now and um, still doing new things and, you know, coming up with um, new ideas and new alliances. And uh, it's it's, you know, he's had a remarkable career, all the publications and all the influence he's had through his uh, institute and his books and his speaking, uh, it's, it's a, a pretty great thing that he's given uh, justification and uh, in a certain way uh, a home uh, for people from his tradition who weren't comfortable in, in the mainstream church. And, you know, he draws a lot of support and alliances from people uh, who think like him and are from other traditions. When, when so, did you, know, you uh, first become familiar with him? I don't know. I mean, uh, the term creation spirituality uh, came up a number of times years and years ago. So, you know, uh, all my research and just my interests, uh, I, I was aware of him. And, you know, we've had people on the show like Mirabai Starr, and Jim Finley, and you know people who are in the world of Christian mysticism and contemplative Christianity, and you know he's uh, always me mentioned by people like them. So I, I don't, I can't, I don't know when I first became familiar with him, but it's a long time ago. Well, he's certainly a a, a good voice for a Christianity, I believe, and uh, it was a wonderful interview. Uh, I'd love to have him back yeah. on the show. Uh, Many, many I'm things sure we could discuss with them. Yep. All Let's right. Do well, that. Uh, we have some, we've had some terrific interviews recently, uh, including the one today with the Matthew Fox, and we have some great ones coming up. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, everybody. Over and out. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.